Our final TEDx speakers for today are committed to ending suffering in Sri Lanka for victims of snake bite. Please welcome Kim McWhorter and Roy Maliapa of AVRI. Good afternoon. It's a, a pleasure to be here today. Uh, my name is Kim McWhorter, and I'm the Associate Executive Director of Animal Venom Research International. And uh, this is Roy Maliapa, who's our Executive Director. And we're basically here to tell you that um, if there's something out there that you're really passionate about, and you find a, a small group of people that are also passionate about it, don't ever think that it's something that you won't be able to accomplish. So just as anthropologist, activist Margaret Mead said, you know, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world, and indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So we're basically going to show you what our passion has been all about and how we've gotten to the point where, you know, basically starting with nothing, we've been able to do a, a, create a project that's had inter, international, um, an international impact. So a little bit, bit about who we are. Uh, I grew up here in Southern California. I've lived here my whole life. And I've always had an interest in herpetology, which is the study of reptiles and amphibians. And uh, I went to school and got a background in public health. So I'm interested in how health affects communities and then an interest in reptiles. That's kind of what introduced me to Roy because he also has an interest in reptiles, but his background is completely different than mine. So, you know, how we kind of came together to work on a project ha has been something that's pretty interesting. So Roy, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself and where you're from? Yes, first and foremost, I'm very grateful to uh, Greg for inviting us to come here to present at TEDx. And uh, like Kim said, I migrated to the United States when I was 14 years old from Sri Lanka. And uh, obviously, I came here for a better opportunity in education because my aunt used to work for the American Embassy in Sri Lanka, and I was able to come through a long process. And ultimately, I got here with my family. And even though I'm Sri Lankan, I'm very American in my heart because it's easy for me to go back to Sri Lanka because A, I look at, I speak the language, but when I go back to Sri Lanka, I speak with a very American vision because all my education, all my opportunities are from this country. So I'm telling you as an immigrant coming to this country, this is the land of opportunity and if you are ever going to make it, don't ever let anybody tell you that you are an immigrant and you can make it. If you cannot make it in the United States, you'll never make it in any other country in the world. And I'm challenging you is because the way we network with people when we come here and the way we interact with people and how we are able to work together as a conglomerate, that is what we can build nations. So my vision is when I came here, I went to college at Cal Poly. I have a degree in engineering. I'm a construction engineer. But my passion has totally been for the rural community. So I was able to network with the right people in this country and formulate a fabulous team of academics working with Kim. And today, we have a collaboration of between two different countries which we'll share about. And this is all to empower you to tell you that if you put your minds and hearts into your passion, you will achieve it. Don't let anybody take that dream away from you. So we started AVRI because we recognized that there was a really terrific need in the country of Sri Lanka for an anti-venom to prevent deaths from venomous snake bite. And we believe that every human being deserves the right to live free from the devastation of snake bite. And our purpose is to bring these anti-venoms or proven treatments of snake bite to the countries where they're needed the most. And we also, we have the technology to solve this problem. It's not like we're looking for the cure for some kind of obscure disease. The technology exists. We just need to bring it to the countries that are in need. So every, almost every day in Sri Lanka, you're gonna see newspaper articles like this, stories like this. A six-year-old child is dead from a snake bite in Sri Lanka. 
um, a wife and a young mother dies from snake bite in Sri Lanka. And these are true stories and it's the true uh, vision of, or the, the true impact of what snake bite does over in Sri Lanka. About 40,000 people are bitten by snakes in Sri Lanka every year, as opposed to here in the United States, we have maybe about 10,000 bites and you only have about two to five deaths due to snake bite. In Sri Lanka, there's thousands of deaths every year and 40,000 people that are bitten. So just a little bit about Sri Lanka. It's primarily a Buddhist country. It's an island nation just uh, south of India. And there's a lot of deep history there and, and a rich culture. And a lot of the, the people live in rural areas and they, they work as uh, farm workers. And there's a lot of really interesting life in Sri Lanka. You know, everything from elephants down to the venomous snakes and tortoises, monkeys, and this large uh, water monitor lizard. That lizard's probably about six feet. It's hard to see the whole length of it in that photograph there. So a little bit about where we started with the Antivenom Project. When I met Roy, we had nothing but an idea and that idea and our passion put together of wanting to do something about snake bite in Sri Lanka has led us through the project that I'm going to show you in our next slides. So we started over there basically with nothing. And we were able to start with at the ground floor and build a serpentarium. And this is the Serpentarium today. This Serpentarium houses about 180 snakes of roughly five different species. This is the inside where you see we have all the snakes that are kept in very hygienic, um, a very hygienic sterile environment so that we can extract the venom that we need. You have to have venom in order to create an anti-venom. And we also have to be really sensitive to the culture and the community and the places where we work. So in Sri Lanka, it's traditional to have the local Buddhist monk come in and, and do a blessing whenever there is some kind of an opening or a special event. So when we held kind of a grand opening for our Serpentarium, we invited the, the local monk to come and bless the facility. So in order to get all the snakes together, we had to create a team of people that went out and actually collected the snakes because there, you know, there was nobody over there that had enough snakes. You know, maybe the zoo had a few different species, but there was nobody that had actually collected the amount of snakes that we needed to create an antivenom. So that took a lot of collaboration with people in the country, again, networking within the local people, the local community. Um, this was one of our contacts within the village of snake charmers over in Sri Lanka, and we actually had them help us to collect some of the snakes. And this man here, Raja, who's holding the Russell's Viper and the picture and the flashlight, we went out in the field with him, and he actually pinned that snake with the flashlight and grabbed it with his bare hands. That was the kind of skill and confidence that, that this particular um, group of people have working with the snakes because it's part of their livelihood. <clears throat> and you run into all other manner of creatures when you're over there in Sri Lanka. Um, this little uh, slug looking thing is actually a leech that's stuck on one of our uh, associates' legs. So a little bit about the snakes. Um, there are four different species of snakes that we're targeting for our antivenom. So with, when we have the final product of our antivenom, you'll, it, depend, it doesn't matter what snake a person is bitten by, the antivenom has, will have been made to help to neutralize the venom of all of those species. So this first one is the hump nose viper, which is just a tiny little viper, but it's, it's responsible for the most hospital admissions due to snake bite. And then this little snake here called the saw scale viper, in Sri Lanka, in the, up in the Northern Territory, is where you're primarily gonna find these snakes. And there have been deaths recorded, but not a whole lot is also known about them because Sri Lanka was going through a 30-year civil conflict that was mostly up in the North. And so not a whole lot of research went into uh, studying these snakes because nobody wants to go and do that kind of research in a war zone. 
So this snake is the Russell's viper, and this one's responsible for the majority of deaths due to snake bite in Sri Lanka. And it's a really large, heavy-bodied snake, so it can really deliver a lot of venom in a bite. And then, of course, the spectacled cobra, which is you know the stereotypical cobra everybody thinks of with the spectacle pattern on the back of the hood. Then there's also the common crate. This one is also responsible for a lot of deaths in Sri Lanka. Um, but due to some of the complications with how its venom works, we're not actually going to include this in our anti-venom. So we went over there uh, just about a year ago, and we took a team with us that are very experienced with working with snakes to go in and train some of our staff that were working in the Serpentarium. And our staff who are already experienced working with snakes we thought it would be really good for them to have some additional support from some people that, were f that are part of our team here in the United States. So this is Kristen Wiley with the Kentucky Reptile Zoo teaching them how to uh, medicate the snakes. So all kinds of veterinary care went into to making sure the snakes were healthy before we started doing venom extraction. And then we were able to start extracting our first venom so here you can see you have, to, you have to actually get your hands on the snake in order to do this. You know, so far nobody's figured out a way to extract venom without actually having to physically touch the snake. Oops. So here we are, a team with our first batch of cobra venom in that vial. All that yellow you see is actually the venom. And this is us with a, a tube of what the Hypnole or Humdos Viper venom. And, and this was really landmark because there's never been an antivenom created using the venom of this snake. It's a snake that lives purely in Sri Lanka. So here's, uh, we're going to show you a couple of videos of us doing the venom extraction. So you can see he has to very carefully remove the snake from its hide box and we, you use a hook and then if you can carefully get a hold of the tail of the snake, he pins down the head and he has to do it close enough to the top of the head that he can still get a grip around its neck without it turning around to be able to bite him. And then the snake itself actually uh, bites onto through the parafilm, and he applies just a little bit of pressure to help squeeze some of the venom out. And the next thing that they're going to do is they're actually going to give the snake medication. Because all of these snakes were caught in the wild, they carry internal parasites. parasites like worms and things like that inside their stomachs. And so we're giving them some medication that will basically kill that if they have them. And at the same time, they're checking like he's looking at the length of the tail. That helps us to, de to, to determine the gender of the snake, whether they're male or female. And then he has to gently coax it back into the hide box. <laughs> and you notice the boots that he's wearing for protection. You have to be really patient when you're working with these animals. You can't, you can't push them. You have to let them basically do their own thing. Yeah, he suffered a bite about a year ago that took 29 vials of antivenom. And to date, he has some major medical problems as yeah. one of my handlers. So his time working with snakes is going to be very limited. With our passion also comes danger. I mean, I milk the snakes all the time. But with age, 
your reflexes get slower and slower and slower. And to us, this is life and death. And our lives are at real risk with this kind of opportunity, with, with what we do to save lives. So we need their venom in order to create an anti-venom because the venom is injected into horses and the horses build antibodies. And that's how we create anti-venoms. And that's where the science comes in and we are working on that aspect of it with Costa Rica. So our, our entire project is entitled with three countries, Sri Lanka, the United States, and Costa Rica. And uh, next year, we will create that antivenom for Sri Lanka, which will be uh, a tremendous uh, new antivenom to Sri Lanka for the first time. Because Sri Lanka has never had an antivenom. We were always buying the antivenoms out of India, which were not working well for our country because it's totally different species and a lot of people were dying from the antivenom. And, that, so, and that's why you need 29 vials to treat a snake bite rather than maybe 5 to 10 vials, which should be a normal dosage because the antivenom is not very effective. And our whole purpose of this project is it's a humanitarian purpose. See, I was given the opportunity when I came here. So what I wanted to do was how can I impact my country? And the only way I could do that is do something that I'm passionate about. So I was able to collaborate with a great team of doctors and scientists from this country go back to my country of origin, and now I'm able to impact and save lives. And that's what I always will challenge people, is that whatever country we are from, we have to impact those countries of where we came from. And that is the American dream. That's what I came here for. And today, I'm living my life at the fullest because I'm able to achieve the, the satisfaction of what I want to do. So that's all I'm here to challenge you all and to encourage you all, believe in your dream, believe in yourselves. And some of our other collaborators include um, the University of Paradinia in Sri Lanka. As soon as we collect the venom, we send it there and they do what's called lyophilizing it or they freeze dry it, which makes it stable. And um, uh, we're really big about exchanging knowledge with all of the different partners that we're working with. So, you know, Costa Rica is giving things to Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka is giving things to us. And, you know, all of us, it's just, it's all about the exchange and it's ab about the partnerships and what we can do together to have a full impact. And we've even gone as far in this project as to involve the, f the First Lady of Sri Lanka. And then of course our partners in Costa Rica, as Roy was talking about, and once you get the venom, you inject small amounts of it into horses, and that's what creates the antibodies. And the horses aren't harmed, they're just basically utilized as the ones that produce the antibodies. And so they get the antibodies out of their blood. So again, you know, just a small group of us we're able to put together this project, you know, starting from nothing. You know, Roy and I aren't famous scientists. We're not um, rich, high-dollar funded <laughs> bigwigs anywhere in the United States. But um, just together, we've put together this small team of people that have been able to create this project that's going to have a, an impact worldwide. And that's it. Thank you.